This is Keith Moore on Halo Talks NYC. I have the pleasure of bringing a new entrepreneur into the fitness industry and the Halo sector. Matan, coming in from Fit Hit, we are going to redefine the boutique fitness industry, and we're going to Krav Maga today. So good to see you, man. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for having me. Great. So um, you know, you got an interesting background coming from uh, from the military on the uh, Israeli side, and we know what the uh, win loss ratio is on the Israeli military. So uh, we can start with that. I'm obviously a big advocate of the special forces and the Mossad um, and everything they've done to protect the motherland. Um, talk to us about, you know, what you did before you decided to bring this into the mainstream. Uh, obviously the, the modality, if you will, has been, uh, pretty well widespread in the U S but you're kind of taking it to the next level. Yeah, so I come from um, from uh, a Krav Maga background, and uh, originally uh, coming from the world of special forces, it was pretty easy for me to plug into that universe later on as a civilian and, and the continue teaching, you know, those tough guys how to be marginally tougher. Uh, yeah. um, but it uh, somewhere along the line it became crystal clear to me that there is a problem, a real big one, that is not being addressed by anyone and I have the skill set to solve it. And it is the problem of um, sexual assault against women in big cities. It is, uh, it is being referred to by us as a silent pandemic. The, it is a huge proportion and let me call it silent because it does not get the attention that it deserves. Um, for a moment there, people thought that the solution lies within just bringing the problem to light and hashtagging it and awareness and let's talk about it. And the hashtag me twos came out and the time's up came up and guess what happened? Sexual assault went up. It yeah, did not solve yeah. the problem. It went in the wrong direction. Um, so I've decided to take the skill set that I know solved this and repackage it in a way that would attract the client who is the least likely to enjoy doing it or to want to do it, which is a tough kind of business thing to do. And it's how do I get the young, well, actually at any age, but the younger just seems to, to come in here, a uh, woman that does not like violence, does not want to be violent, would never walk into a aggressive martial arts studio or carry a gun for her self-protection. She, she doesn't like any of that. How do I get that skill set into her? And that is how Fit Hit came about. And yeah, so that's in a, that's the short story. Yeah, when you, when you take a look at, you know, the evolution of, of Krav Maga, obviously there have been a lot of boutiques that have been set up, but they haven't really been necessarily with the focal point of also as a fitness and as a, as a weight loss or as a strength, um, you know, gain type of... Um, Activity. So when you kind of took a look back and said, okay, how do I turn this into more of, you know, into the fitness industry and a boutique fitness, um, you know, opportunity, what did you kind of craft to make it as such where it's not necessarily just like a self-defense? Because a lot of people have taken it just for self-defense that I know and love it. And, you know, it makes them feel a lot more confident than they were before. Yeah. Um, so I, I lived that side for a minute. My first school was called Krav Maga Academy, which is the exact kind of like thing that you uh, referred to before. And when I started Krav Maga Academy, I, I actually did want a lot of women to go ahead and do that, but I just didn't, it wasn't the right pack. Krav Maga Academy was not the right packaging. Teaching Krav Maga the same way I learned it wasn't the right packaging for the client that needs it the most and, and is afraid and is afraid to do that. So I did that for a while. And within the Krav Maga universe, it was very successful. It was one of the largest Krav Maga places in the United States. And it won a bunch of awards for being that. And still, it was considered tiny when compared to the fitness universe. So you take all these Krav Maga boutiques together, you put them combined, and they don't produce as much as one successful franchise. Um, not even one semi-successful franchise. And that is um, a piece of information that I actually found out by accident. I, I spent 24 hours, 48 hours in Harvard 
And I just happened to come across somebody that could pull off a lot of financial information on all markets. And he just did that for me as a favor with the, of the Krav Maga world. And we saw numbers for the first time of what is the Krav Maga market looks like. It was very clear that with my ambition to create something huge, it will not happen under the Krav Maga umbrella. Um, so it needed to change. The easiest thing to do was to start reading all the reviews of Krav Maga Academy. All of them said what a wonderful workout it was. It, was, yeah. it wasn't even like I learned so much self-defense. It was, but every single one of them was talking about what a great workout it was. And it was a terrific workout. I, I personally uh, believe that if you're going to be able to handle yourself, you need to be athletic. There is no magic bullet to it. You got to be stronger than you are today. You got to be faster than you are today. You got to be leaner than you are today. Those are all fitness uh, accomplishments. And the students that loved it recognized that. I did it. Oddly enough, wow. I needed I needed a, another person to like point it to me and say, you're looking at the wrong thing. Flip it. Don't right. be the most aggressive self-defense system in the planet. Be the best workout on the planet. You learn self-defense on the back end. That's how that's how fit it was born. So so, you know, maybe you can talk a little bit about what what some of the techniques are, um, you know, as as part of this self-defense, you know, programming that was taught to the special forces and that you're also, you know, training other you know, public sector related organizations. Um, and then how did you kind of turn that into, look, here's kind of like the, the core of what you need to be able to do. And the workout is basically like conditioning you to be able to do that almost like innate. Um, you know, like we work with a guy in the hockey industry and, you know, there are certain muscles you use when you're, you know, free skating and you're going towards a puck, you know, at the red line. You know, there are certain muscles you use and certain techniques you're using to build, you know, those specific leg muscles that are going to get you there a little bit quicker than somebody who's not doing those types of lunge workouts or doing those types of, you know, uh, crossovers. Um, so talk about some of the things. And then you, you don't really graduate from fit hit. It's almost like, look, this is like we're constantly keeping you at your peak performance. Yes, yes. Fit hit does not have a graduation date, which is very different, by the way, if you look at the world of self-defense, self-defense, right. you go, you take a course and now you know self now you're cured. That's not how it is in, in real life, right? There is a certain skill set that has to be built and there's always an athleticism that needs to be built. What's the end of athleticism? What's the, right? What's the graduation of living a healthy athletic lifestyle? There is no graduation, right? It stops when, you know, when your heart stops. So how do we, so how do we integrate that into this universe with fit hit? Um, the first major thing that we did was to figure out what makes our student, our, our, our perfect student, afraid to show up to a class like that. So the first hurdle is actually wasn't a physical one. It was a mental one. And so the first thing that we did is go through a whole lot of conversation and, and we analyzed and found about five different fears that preventing a person from going into that. And then we started eliminating those fears as a part of the experience. Fear number one is the fear of injury and contact. Every time we talk about fighting and fighting world and stuff like Krav Maga, Maga, by the way, well, Krav Maga stands for contact combat in Hebrew. It's, it, contact oh. is in the name. Now, if you're the type of person that don't like sweat on over you and you look, you're kind of gentle, that even the idea of contact is, uh, is scary. You add to it COVID, <laughs> where, the, where sure, sure. the whole thing of contact is you know, has all these other ramifications, that fear gets amplified. So the first thing that we did was uh, remove the one-on-one -on -one contact in the beginning, and we created these human life punching bags, first these six-foot-tall, mean-looking, bad-looking dummies, and they're and they're stations. So every person gets their own station, and they reserve mm -hmm, it the smart. same way you would reserve a bike to a spin bike, right? But you were mm -hmm. and. And instead of like a regular punching bag that you will get in a regular kickboxing or boxing, those boutiques are, are all over the place. This thing looks like a, like a person and, and it is slightly intimidating, but not in a way that another person would be intimidating for that, for that person. Now it's exciting because now, all right, this guy is six foot tall. Can I hit it? Can I not? So the mental game starts to shift right off the bat with the type of experience that they're, that they're facing. Once we get them to cross that and start punching the thing and see that they can be accurate and see that they can, they can be powerful with their punches. Then we start introducing them to the more realistic, uh, 
problems that they may face. The person gets choked or put in bear hug or some all the all the bad things that can happen to women and, and men, by the way, uh, uh-huh. as they as they as they go through their daily life. But it happens after we free them from the idea of what you're doing here is dangerous. And and that happens with removing the contact, like from in in the beginning. What we found was is that most of those fears usually get eliminated within one hour of yes. training. It takes an hour for a person to develop trust in the process, trust in the team that is facing them, and trust in themselves that they'll be able to handle whatever it is we have uh, coming up for them. That first hour is a mental change more than it is a physical one. And it's just designed to smash every self-limiting belief a person has about what a fighter is, or what a fighter looks like, or what a fighter should behave. Now, if you take a look at similar types of modalities, and I might be stretching here, but if you take a look at martial arts as an industry, martial arts studios rarely close. You know, they've got young kids that are in there. There is an evolution. Uh, they probably make a lot of money selling, you know, colored belts uh, to the parents. Yeah. And, um, you know, kids kind of use that as a way for, you know, self-confidence, you know, participate in a group, you know, high awareness of, of, of what their surroundings are. Um, it's also obviously a workout, um, but it definitely takes kids to, to another level of um, self-assurance and, 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 you know, being able to, to, to deal with complex situations, you know, as, as they grow up. Has Krav Maga targeted the younger demographic? Is there an opportunity here where, you know, you're in New York City, you've got kids that are going to all different, you know, after school programs or is this more towards you know hey this is like a, a 21 to 35 you know demo to start and then you'll kind of see how it expands from there excellent question is there an opportunity to grow it into a younger market there absolutely is have i tried it i did have i succeeded no i okay. failed launching kids classes uh, more than once. And when I say failed, I just, it never got the traction, right? A kid, I could open a kid's class and have a bunch of kids doing it. But if there's no growth curve, I consider it a failure. And um, and that's what happened to, uh, at, least, at least for mine, I, I don't, I don't particularly, I don't think it means that just, there's no room for kids in Krav Maga. I don't think that that's what it means. I didn't crack that code. It was also not a code that I was personally uh, passionate about to teach wow. uh, children how to do that. It is something that my child will learn. She's two now, so you know, within the next probably six months, she's going to start her training program. And uh, and I recommend to every parent to enroll their child in a program that teaches them how to handle themselves. Uh, I was I was just confronted with such a large problem that exists today for a very specific age group that I immediately got to work on solving on solving that. But big picture, absolutely. You teach every girl how to handle herself and she's eight. You solve that yeah. problem long term later on. Um, you know, it's interesting yeah. that you, you know, you call this fit hit and you don't, you know, it's not called Krav Maga on, on the front door. You know, no. talk about. How, you know, a lot of people, as an example, Gold's Gym was a, a, a group that I worked with for a long time. And they used to have a big logo of a, of a bodybuilder. You know, they call him Oscar. Yeah. Um, and then over time, they decided to put Oscar inside the club and put Gold's Gym outside the club. And there was a psychology to that. But if you look at a lot of the Gold's Gyms now around the country, 60% of the members are women. Um, and I'd say Olympic squats, and strength training trends higher in females than it does uh, in males, um, just from the yeah. usage in the health club industry. So what are some of the things that you've learned on kind of packaging this up in the marketing side? And I think a lot of our audience, you know, deals with certain names that they might have historically used that they might take a time out and say, hey, maybe there's something that, that people are, are thinking about that is not to my benefit. Yeah. So... Wow, this subject kept kept my brain uh, working for a, for a couple of years. So, I start I started with Krav Maga Academy. There is no confusion as to what we offer. Our logo for Krav Maga Academy 
was a lion's head with the Star of David embedded into it. So there's no confusion where the skill set came from. Right. And I always thought that that was beneficial because it makes it clear what we are. However, this is what I see when I see the logo. And this is what I read when I read Krafaga Academy. What my target audience hears is Durka Durka Burka Burka Academy. Most of them never heard the words Krav Maga before. There is zero thing in their mind that creates, right? it's two foreign words that they haven't heard of it. The ones uh -huh. that did hear of it heard that it was some crazy Israeli military thing. Now, love Israel, hate Israel. I don't want your emotions to go into your buying decision when sure, you come sure. to my school to how to defend yourself. Now, Star of David was the logo. Now, here's the thing. The Star of David is the symbol of Israel, which is a geographical location. It is also the symbol of the Jewish people for the past like 2,000 years. Now, I'm Jewish myself, and I practice Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, MMA, wrestling. I engulf myself in all form of martial arts. If I found an amazing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu school, and in order for me to wear their brand, I had to put Jesus played on the cross because they decided that, they, you know, that's what right. they want to do on it. I might have certain emotions regarding putting Jesus on the cross on me, on my shirt as, a, as being who I am that have nothing to do with the product of, of jujitsu, right? So there were all these underlying emotions. I'm sure Oscar, that huge dude, wasn't welcoming to the target audience, right? And if you say mostly not women today, not, not initially, not initially, yeah, not initially yeah. right? But not even women. Think about guys that don't look like Oscar, right? Do I fit in in a place where, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger is the is the guy, right? right. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not. I'm 120 pounds, and or maybe I'm 300 pounds of fat, and mm -hmm. I don't look like that. I don't feel like that. So, uh, so those two factors, right? The name, the logo, have created a, the, in in my opinion, a barrier to entry. And let me tell you something: when it's your child, when it's your baby, when you thought of all of it. It is a hard thing to admit that you probably uh, thought wrong. Right. And, and I went into that process. Fit hit has the word fit first, hit right. second. And that's on purpose. It is a fitness first facility. You don't come here to learn how to fight. You come here to get in shape. The tool in order to get in shape is you learn the fight skills. Which specific fight skills? Well, Krav Maga is the best of it. You go to our website. The word Krav Maga comes in paragraph three. Today. Yeah, so it used to be the name of the company. Right. And today is third paragraph in with an explanation of what it is. And uh, and what I found was that it was an easier, it, it, it just removed the barrier to entry. Once they're in here, they love it. They use the terminology, yeah. they use our terminology, they have no problem buying into the system uh, once they, uh, you know, once they feel it. So when, that's when you what take it a is. look at when you take yeah, and we've invested in several concepts pre-COVID in New York. We were invested in a company called Switch Playground, uh -huh. <clears throat> which was a you know a, a high-intensity workout, and it, similar to what you were talking about about combat, you were switching to different stations every two minutes, not yeah. COVID-friendly. Uh, we decided not to reopen that to date. Um, but if you take a look at you know thinking about Fit Hit and you know telling someone in an elevator or on the subway and say, look, Fit Hit basically gives you, and I'm going to make this, you know, in my own words that you could modify it. Sure. You know, it, look, it's, 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 it's the same, you know, caloric, uh, you know, burn as a Orange Theory or a Barry's Boot Camp. And it also is layered in with this self-defense, you know, technique that is not only making you faster, stronger, but now more alert. And now you have this new craft or skill that, that is a part of that. Is, is that, an accurate way to describe. That's what it is, right? It's a fitness experience with an added benefit you don't get from any other fitness experiences. You can go to Soul Cycle for two years, three times a week, and in the end of it, you don't know how to how to ride a bicycle. There is zero skill building in that in that universe. But what if I gave you that Soul Cycle experience from an emotional standpoint, right? So you come in, you have a beautiful facility that is friendly and fun. You get in that workout that is working for you. So you get the caloric burn, you get the heart rate, you get the weight loss and everything that comes with why you would walk into a high-end boutique studio fitness in New York. But when you leave here, 
you leave here with something that stays with you outside of the gym. And you don't get that with anybody else. Not just yeah. the feeling, an actual skill set. I like to, I like to um, compare it to like a deck of cards, right? You come here on your first day, you get the two of diamonds, you keep it in your pocket, you go live your life. You come here again, you get the two of hearts, another skill set, right? Another way to handle something bad. And then you go and you live your life. Every time you come here, you just collect another skill, another by the time. You let some time pass by, you have a full deck, which means no matter what hand life deals you, you got the winning hand in your, in your back pocket because that's what Fit Hit gives you, right? It's that skill set. Now, I've researched the, uh, the, the universe of, of boutique fitness to figure out where do we even plug in? Like, what are we? Are we a gym? Are we a dojo? Are we, uh, like, what, what is Fit Hit? And... Uh, I, I got to tell you, Fit Hit is kind of its own category that puts together results-based fitness, so body transformations, safe and fun community, and skill building. Most gyms are two out of those three. Uh -huh. I haven't seen anyone that connects all three. We're right in that center of all of that. You want skill building, like you want to learn how to fight, and you want to see results, you don't consider that environment to be super safe and fun and friendly, right? Those are the, the, the aggressive places of the world. Yeah. You want to, right? You want to have fun and see results. So you, you take, that's where most boutique fitness live, right? Community, fun, results oriented. What's the skill set? You went to Orange Theory. L love the brand, by the way. Love the people behind the brand. Get a chance to meet a few of them. Love the workout. Love everything about it. But once you leave it, oh yeah, where's the added value other than the fitness element of it, right? There isn't, but in Fit Hit, there is. Well, one of the, the interesting opportunities I think that you're, you'll have in front of you very quickly, um, given that everyone's going back to work, uh, I would argue that New York is not as safe as it was, you know, five years ago. You know, corporations are trying to do everything they can to either attract, enhance, or maintain their you know, employee base and their human capital, I, I would suspect that there would be a big appetite for corporations to, you know, basically say, you know, one, we already have a flexible spending account where we're going to start paying for your boutique fitness, uh, or they've got a gym, gym pass or a class pass type of, you know, partnership, um, providing discounts or, or access to boutiques. But I think this slant of actually saying, Hey, my, my corp, my company, is actually providing the tools for me to make sure I get to work safely and back. And, you know, they care about me. Um, I think you're kind of sitting at an interesting cross section of the realities of life. Yeah. And Pete, I got to tell you, pre COVID, as Grab Maga Academy, we used to get phone calls from companies, uh, you know, maybe once a month or so, asking for us to do some sort of corporate event for them. And okay. the, the, um, the motivation for it was more team building, doing something fun, doing something a little quirky. We're not like any other company and we do it. Today, we are training companies on a regular basis. We got seminars almost on a weekly basis with companies. And the phone calls are different. The phone calls in New York today are, look, we're in back in the office days. My, our employees are afraid to get in the subway and come to work. Yeah. What can we do to help? Well, we have a seminar specifically about subway safety, right? Red flags, yeah. how to recognize bad guys before the things go bad. You analyze the situation. We show them the videos. We show them how to solve the same problem they were seeing, things that are, that are happening. Then we teach them how to handle themselves. Something bad happens in a fit hit way, which is fun and exciting and music and all this other like stuff, right? Not in a uh, like military way. And, and, and what happens is, is that they love it and most of the time, most of, more, more often than not, almost, almost every company that have hired us once, with the exception of a handful, have hired us multiple times because they see the value to their own people. There's a huge opportunity there. Uh, I, don't, I don't have, a, I don't have a, a B2B section built out yet. So I don't have a department that goes out to businesses and pitches. If we're getting that thing uh, like organically, organically yeah. that's, so thank you for the word. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're getting the business organically. Because a new need has arise for businesses. 2023, though, we are actually putting the work behind an outreach program to, uh, to businesses to grow that. Awesome. Well, look, I look forward to uh, when I'm back in New York, taking some classes and uh, 
and get my skill set from you. Uh, for the people listening here, we'll have all the information in the show notes. And uh, you got a good name uh, on the URL, fithit.com. So that was a, that's a win right there as well. Um, so any, any parting words here for, uh, for our listeners? Uh, yeah. So, you know, FitHit is a company that is, is relatively new. It's getting started, right? FitHit was technically open 2019, year before COVID started. Then had to take a break for a year, uh, a little bit over a year, New York City classes, and then and then came back. From a business standpoint, I uh, I believe that it showed the type of resiliency that very few businesses in our position have shown over the years, and um, we are on a on a growth path right now. Now our goal is to uh, multiply fit hit. Because guess what? We don't solve a problem that only exists in New York City. We solve a problem that exists in almost every community in the United States and beyond. Things are pretty bad in Europe. Things are terrible in the Middle East. And everywhere you land, you will find that there is a need and excitement behind a product like FitHit. So if you're listening to this on the back end and thinking, what do you need to bet on next? Get in touch with me and bet Sounds on FitHit. Good. Yeah. Well, welcome to the Halo Sector. Thanks for bringing this uh, unique perspective and skill set. And I uh, hope people get on board here quickly and uh, protect yourself and, uh, and get the fitness results you want at the same time. So welcome to the industry, Muthan. Thank you, Pete. Thank you.